This is a rack, physical rack. Okay? And we go right along the sides, and they run from 1 to 42. Okay, so it's a 42 unit full rack. The one that's out there is a 21 half rack. I think that's exactly half the rack they have out there. Okay? So what we have in here, starting, we'll start from the bottom and work our way to the top. What we have in here, first of all, is two backup power supplies. Uninterruptible power supplies. Um, and even though Gravely Hall is a very old building, uh, we got lucky in this sense, because what's happening is you'll see up on the wall that there's two electrical conduit lines coming into this room right here. Those trace all the way back to the hallway where there's two separate circuit boards and underground all the way across the road to where there's literally two separate um, electrical um, lines that come in to feed this building. And that's because it's an old building and as this place grew and was kind of like this, they needed more and more electricity. So eventually the uh, Idaho Power said, okay, we've got to run a hole. So when we discovered that, I said, okay, I want one line coming in from one of those um, main lines and another one of these coming in from the other. So one is feeding this one, this UPS, the other feeds that one, okay? Now each of these servers here has redundant power supplies. In fact, they're hot swappable also. So if one of ours goes out, um, they're both sufficient to run the server. And if one goes out, we can leave the machine running, pull out that power supply, pop in a new one, very modular type of design, and we're back up and, and running. So let's say for this machine right here, it's two in the backup power supply. The other one's plugged into that one. The only way to bring down any one of these individual servers is for both of those electrical lines to get cut, shut down. Essentially it means the whole campus has got to be completely out of power and probably most of Pocatello before these servers come down. So that's pretty cool. We've got a real nice, uh, robust system electronically that way. Then as we work our way up, uh, these machines, this is our newest server right here. Uh, and that's K2. What you'll notice is that all of our machines in, in the GIS Center are named after geographical places, um, typically mountain ranges. Okay? Our largest server that we have in our local area network, um, although it's physically not here, is Everest. <laughs> Who wouldn't figure, right? Um, and that's a gigantic machine that actually sits in the College of Business that backs up absolutely everything physically here. Everything that's st stored here is physically backed up off-site uh, in the basement of the College of Business. Uh, it's actually part of our local area network. If we look at our network, we'll see Everest down there. It looks like it's just right here, but it's not. It, it's in a completely separate building. Um, and then some folks say, you know, you know what, is that, if it really gets that bad, you know, some sort of environmental disaster gets that bad, I'm not going to be worrying about my GIS data <laughs> if the whole campus is like underwater or something like this, right? Okay, so I think I'm not going to worry about it at that point. That's offsite enough for us. Um, but this is K2, and K2 is running the uh, NAEP image services on ArcGIS server. And you guys all know what NAEP is, right? National Agricultural Imagery Program. That was acquired in 2009. Um, and so all that imagery, we're talking about 1.6 terabytes of data, is stored on that machine and being served out to any, anyone who wants to use it anywhere in the world, really, using ArcGIS image services. Okay? We got an enormous cache built on that thing that's actually about another 2 terabytes of cache built on it. You guys will learn all about building cache later on in the semester on those image services. Then as we, uh, as we go up, now you can see that that's a RAID system. Okay? And all these are the individual hard drives. If there was a hard drive that was bad, we would get a yellow light would light up on that hard disk, uh, and that would be the physical indication that something's wrong. Plus, when, when that server detects that something is wrong, an email message, SMTP message, is sent over uh, to Kendra, our system administrator, uh, and she'll see that next time she checks her email, typically every morning and whatever, you know. So then that would be replaced. You'd pull this open, put in a new hard drive and follow the prompts that are up on your screen. Um, so there's a number of different uh, servers that you can see inside here. Um, and, and a lot of them got separate duties. Okay, so this one right down here, as I said, its only role is serving image services, NAEP being the primary one. Okay? Um, some of these other servers right here 
One of them is um, called Patagonia, another very, very large uh, machine. And that serves as the GIS Center. Everyone who's working in the GIS Center has backup space on Patagonia, large amount of hard drive space. It's also where we share data, where the individual researchers share data. There's a share folder out there and we can all share individual files. Um, and it's also the home, uh, or Jackson is the next one up here, that's the home of the spatial library. So when you go out to our server and you hit spatial data, and then you start ste maybe stepping through or searching for data, whatever it is, uh, DEMs or satellite imagery, it looks like you're still on the main website, but in reality you've jumped across to this one, and that's Jackson, and that's our spatial library. It's holding over 40,000 individual GIS data sets uh, for free access. For the most part, anyone in the world has access to those unless there's a um, license agreement. Some of the satellite imagery that we purchase has got a license agreement that it can only be used by the GIS center. Some of it's only for ISU, uh, those sorts of things. So then we restrict that by IP ranges. We want to say, okay, this folder can only be used by ISU. Well, then we say that anyone who's coming in to that server with that request to download from I, uh, 134.50 and anything inside that, then it's okay. It lets it go out. If it's not 134.50, it says deny, can't get it. Okay, so a pretty easy implementation on IIS's side. Um, this one right here is actually a very large server. One, two, three, four, four unit server. Okay, uh, it's a quad processor. It's an older machine, it's called Cellway. And this is uh, storing our spatial database engine, SDE and IBM DB2. Okay, so there's a lot of data that we store out there um, that's ready to be is right here, right now, just as if it's on your hard drive. Um, but it's, it's, it's kind of the data, it's the research data that a lot of us here in the GIS Center use. So it's the historical um, field samples back to 2000, all those uh, sorts of data. It's the roads infrastructure for when we're going out in the field and need to be able to navigate our way around, uh, all those sorts of things. And that's, that's this machine right here called Cellway. This thing right here, it's a little desk. We store our papers and pencils in there because half the time you walk in here, you need to make a note on something and you've forgotten it. So just use that little drawer right there for that. Um, let's see. This machine um, is this is O'Neill. Um, O'Neill, uh, which is a study area just south of uh, Pocatello, that's why we named it that, um, is an absolute mirror, perfect mirror for uh, Leatherman. Oh, which is here, okay? Hmm? Yep, it's a perfect mirror for everything that Leatherman does. So it's the website, the basic website, plus it's the Idrisi server.